for listening to Earth Worst Nathan Ever. Okay, stop. Stand still. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the second worst marathon ever. I'm Big Anklovich. And I'm Rashad Field, and we're doing the Pixar list of questions. Not questions. Rules. Help me out. What are we doing? <laughs> it is a list of rules, yes. The rules for storytelling from Pixar. Number seven. Come up with your ending before you figure out your middle. Seriously. Endings are hard. Get yours working up front. What do you think about that, Rochelle Field? Well, that seems really straightforward. Uh, I don't know how you argue with that. Can I mean, you come up with an ending before a middle? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know your destination. You know where you want to go. And then all of the rest of the book or the movie is leading to that place. If you know that you want Luke to have been able to harness the Force enough to destroy the Death Star using the Force rather than technology, then you're able to say, okay, well, in order for that to happen, Luke has to you know, see the limits of technology. He has to learn what the Force is. He has to, you know, the, the, the stepping stones where you're just like, okay, so we need a scene like this. We need a scene where Luke says, with the blast shield down, I can't even see how am I supposed to fight. All these, these steps that will get us logically to, Luke, you've turned off your targeting computer. What's wrong? I, anyway, I, I Don't I you have to know that there's a Death Star before you can decide you want Luke to blow up the Death Star? Does that count as there being a middle? Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, you... But it, it, it didn't have to be a Death Star. It could just be that, you know, the, the Luke Skywalker saves the day. Luke Skywalker defeats the Empire. Luke Skywalker destroys that doesn't, I mean, whatever it is. That's how we're going to end, you know, with this farm boy who's a nothing is going to be savior of the galaxy. That's our ending. And then everything before that, we, we, we figure out how and why and what's going to be the most satisfying Thing. And, and maybe, you know, you don't even know he's a farm boy yet. <laughs> you just... what? Maybe he's just a stick figure. And you're just like, this stick figure... No, yeah, I don't know. Okay. It, it seems like... You, uh, I, I guess that works, but it seems like what she's saying here is... Uh, not that you can have a basic ending. Because basic endings aren't hard. Everybody knows Luke's going to save the galaxy or whatever. Luke's going to win against the Empire in the end. She says, know your ending and get your ending together because endings are hard. Get your ending together before you do the rest. Which I can understand that because if you know where you're going, it's much easier. You can even do like work backwards, which is one of the things the woman in my uh, outlining thing suggested. is, Hey, if you know your ending... And you're beginning, you can work backwards and say, okay, if we're going to get to here, then what has to happen before that? Okay, this, and then what happens to happen before that? Oh, this. And then you can make the stepping stones that take you all the way back to where you started from. Okay, well, the ending, for example, of The Incredibles, is the family comes together as a unit and realizes that they are much more powerful together, that they need one another, and they fight as super as a superhero family, right? That's the ending. And so taking a step back until ultimately you come to the part where it's like, okay, this is a dysfunctional family. Superheroes don't work in this world. No I, one's happy because they're not allowed to be themselves. And finally the parents allow them to be themselves. See, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I'm not touching on endings are hard. The, the thing with a movie uh, compared to a book or a screenplay even is the ending is the most important part of a movie. That's when you walk out of the theater, that is what you remember. Yeah. I, and I've, I've maintained this for years because of horror movies. The way that a horror movie ends can make or break that horror movie. You know, and, and so that's why there's so often an arbitrary scare at the end. You know, just give them one last jolt. Before they walk out so that they'll laugh and be talking about, oh, kind of thing. And that's what they remember. But for a book or for a, a screenplay, definitely, they would always talk about what's the most important page of a screenplay. Page number one. What's the second most important page in the screenplay? Page number two. 
you know, you have to hook the reader from the very beginning and all that stuff and create a world more, that will cause some agent to be willing to read through beyond page three or whatever before he finally tosses it because he's got 18 more. It's not an agent. It's a PA that's working for school credit or barely minimum wage who has to read through 30 scripts today. And you want them to be willing to continue and read through to the end. So you need your start to be as hooky as possible. But for a finished movie, no, it's, it's, got, it's the ending. It's the finale. It's, the, it's what you leave them with as, and then the John Williams music plays and they walk out into the night. And so that's if hard. you've got John Williams along, your ending doesn't have to be that awesome, really, because... Sorry, okay, go on. Uh, no, so I'm, I just, that's my opinion, is the, the, the in a movie, the ending is more important. And, and if we're taking a story or a novel, I still feel like the beginning is more important than the end in a, in a story or a novel. Okay, but well, we're talking middle versus end here. Right, but, but she says endings are hard. Endings are hard, so you need to get your ending squared away and then do your middle, is what she says. So we're not... We're not fighting against beginning here. We're not comparing beginning with end. We're carrying end with middle. She's saying get a good ending, get it squared away, and then work on your middle. Because the ending is the part that's important. Okay, well, but it just seems like if you know your, the, the end point, if you know what you want your hero to accomplish or the characters to achieve at the end, then you know what steps to put in front of them. I mean, if right. you don't know where they're going and you don't know if, if Leia's going to end up with Han, you don't know if Leia's going to end up with Luke by the end of the thing, and then it can go any number of, of directions. I mean, it could go some absurd direction where Leia turns out to be Luke's sister and that way you don't have to decide. You can just say, well, Luke, you don't get nobody. The end. <laughs> if, but, you know, if they had known that ending, Leia ends up with Han. From the beginning, then the, the steps leading toward it might have been very different. And the people that get all icky in Empire Strikes Back would all be dead and in hell where they belong. They wouldn't exist because nobody would be icky because we wouldn't have had any of those scenes that make people uncomfortable for some reason. Sorry, I, mean, I, I, I guess I come from a very incestuous family and to me it's totally fine. <laughs> to you it's totally normal. You're used to it. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. And I uh, that's... Definitely, I think what she's getting at here is you need to know where you're going. And on top of that, what she wants you to get something that's really good, nailed in, you know, set up, squared away, before bothering to go through and, oh, so this, and there's this little thing, and this is how what he's going to try the first time and fail, and the second time and fail, etc. Yeah, I think, I think that's important. Have you, I mean, I know that you've written a thing or two where you start into it, you have your general premise, etc., that you started off with, so you know how it begins, and the beginning is what's going to be strong, and then you start going, and you aren't really sure where it's going, where it's going to end. I know you've told me a time or two where you've done something like that, where you started writing, and then you're like, okay, and at some point you're like, I need to make a list of how this could end, and... Pick what's what, what's the best from that list, kind of a thing. Those sto projects are always disasters and very rarely get written, and almost never have you read any of those. <laughs> the, the the strongest ones are things like the calling, where I know I start with the ending. I know how it ends. Uh huh. I know what the phone call is and what the voice says and what that means, and then I construct an entire story. So that it feels like a natural progression. And, and you know what? People really liked The Calling. But I don't know that it's a natural progression. That phone call thing may have come out of nowhere. Because it's... You never hear the nickname until she says it on the phone. And I did that on purpose so that nobody would be able to escape pod me and say, I knew it was going to be that weird as soon as you said it on page 7. And I'd be like, okay, but that doesn't mean the story is bad if you knew... <laughs> Why, why, why does that derail the whole story? Because you think you're smarter than the writer. Can it, you just enjoy? Can't can you be happy for me, Dad? So, so 
that one was a strong story, at least. Because the, had the ending to some, in mind. Because the endings are hard, right? And, yeah, and you got it squared away, and then we're able to do the middle. Uh, and even so, the ending that went on the Dune Steve is not the ending that is out there on Amazon.com. Because in, and the Dune Steve is killed, remember, by his own, by the doppelganger that looks like his child. Oh, right. And it was his other child that did it, though, right? He went and right. saved that child, and that child kills him. The- and again, I didn't know whether I wanted... I, I knew what I wanted the story to end with, with the sister killing the monster, but the monster killing the dad. And I thought, there, how can I do that if it's a story told from the perspective of the dad? How can I do that? How can I see him kill them? And then I thought, well, I guess he's got to have two kids. And that made it better because you were able to point really vividly, wildly at the daughter. But there's some, dude, there's something wrong with the daughter. The daughter, oh my gosh, she's playing with her many dolls. <laughs> and ignore the, the son completely. And hopefully that, that that surprised people that the son was also one because... It was misdirection in that way. I mean, she, the, sure, the daughter was a demon, but it, I, I was able to have my cake and eat it too. And, and again, that's something before I ever wrote the story that I had to work out. Gosh, I wish... I, I, is there a Pixar example that we should use? I, I feel like <laughs> California Rish here talking about my own this, stuff. No, it, you, with this one, again, it's it's not one that you can you know, point to an example of because we don't know how they wrote these. We don't know what decisions they made. In the writing process, we only have the final product to say, oh, they must have done this, and this. That doesn't work. You can't say, oh, yeah, well, they knew that Woody and Buzz would come and work together in the end, and so they were able to do this, 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 and this, you know, we, instead of this, this. we, the, Yeah, it's one where we can't use the Pixar movie itself as an example, I would say, and only something that we know the backstory to. So yeah, you talking about that story is a perfect example of, and you, like you said, when you start out on your journey without uh, knowing where the journey is supposed to end, it turns out to be a disaster and almost never makes it to the end because you never manage to figure it out. You don't get the end. You don't. You don't. And it's and if you get one, it's no good. It's not interesting. It feels forced or just thrown in there or something like that because of that. So I think this is also a, it's a pretty good rule. Pretty important. Obviously we're not arguing the importance of ends and beginnings like we were saying before, but the ends and middles having the end. But okay. The ending of brave where because of whatever happens, which we haven't come up with yet, Merida and her mother learn to understand one another and become a family, I guess. Is that is that fair? So that's how we're going to end it. Is 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 that they are able to appreciate each other and and form a mother daughter bond. So to get to that point, we're going to set up all these dominoes that go all the way back to Merida and her mother don't get along. They don't understand one another. Merida is much more of a daddy's girl, and you know what I mean. Uh-huh. I, I think. That's, I mean, even without knowing how yeah, they not knowing what they, what they said their ending was, that works, if that was uh, how they went with it. So we'll, we'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> I, I don't know. It is some, but these are all things, I think that's a really important one. That makes me think I need to keep that in mind for every project. And, you know, just try and work on the ending first and make the ending as kick-ass as possible. See, but because I write horror... So much, and I have that in mind that in a horror movie, the most important thing is the fin- finale. I-, I sort of aim that way anyway. Of, okay, so then what? How, what's yeah. going to happen? Is the boogeyman going to get him? Yes. Okay. So how do we? You know. Yeah, I, I kind of had a similar experience when I was writing my story Do Over, which nobody has read or knows anything about, but me. Or will ever. Uh, probably true. Not even the first readers, because I'm pretty sure they haven't first read it. They took their lives, man. <laughs> but, but yeah, I remember with that story, I kind of, I had a beginning. I had sort of a middle, but I didn't have an end. Uh, I wasn't sure what to do with it. 
I knew some of the things that I wanted to happen, but the actual ending, and I think I talked with you about it a little bit until we finally came up with what turned out to be the ending. But once you discovered that what that was, did it make the writing easier? Did it make it make it well, now totally I did. know what I have to do? Yeah, having the path that I'm, I'm okay now, so that means this has to happen, this has to happen, this has to happen, etc. And there were still surprises. I managed to surprise myself still with things that happened that I wasn't expecting. I don't know if they're good or not because nobody's read it, gave me any feedback, but uh, no one ever will. But yeah, it made the writing a lot easier than uh, it, it probably could have been. So it's definitely a good rule that you should apply in your work if you're doing that. Okay, so I, I, I think that that's, uh, that's all we have to say about this one. Yeah. Right? I mean, we could talk more and give more examples, but I'm sure there will be many yeah. more examples I, to come. In other yeah, ways. I don't think we need to. I think the examples that have been given are more than sufficient. More than. All right, so we'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thanks for listening. I'm Big Ankovic. And I'm Rich Outfield. Happy endings to you all. That Gets My Goat is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it.